At the end of these, this touch, we'll model these bugs, animate their wings to flap procedurally through procedural noise, and then we'll make them follow this light source. Uh, one tip, make sure you do not use more than two on the subdivision surface modifier, and then everything will run smoothly and it'll be a lot easier to manage. Let's get into it. I'm sure you are as big of a fan of Ian Hubert as I am. Uh, however, you might, like myself, find it quite difficult to follow his master tutorials that are often a minute to less than a minute long, like this one, which is Animate Moths in Blender. So I thought one thing I would have loved when I started out is an Ian Hubert tutorial slowed down. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create this moth tutorial. We'll make a few tweaks and changes, but it's going to be more or less 100% inspired from that. So the first thing you do is go into Blender, press numpad 7, and we're going to add a modifier uh, to our default cube which would be the subdivision surface modifier and we're going to make sure the viewport and render is set to 1. This is just a des de uh, design preference. Then we're going to press shift D, press Y to lock it to the Y axis, bring it out like that, then select this again and then we're going to press tab and we're going to press 3 to be on face select and we're going to select this face over here, then press numpad 7, press G or better yet, let's press E to extrude to something like that and then S to scale and we can create some sort of interesting shape indeed and then we can press tab and we can shift select the head control J to join and now we've got one object let's press right new collection and we're going to call this bugs you can call it moths I'm going to call it bugs and we're going to take this default cube in here and we're going to call this bug body for now it's just the bug body we can right click on the shaded smooth we might not like that so we're going to go to the object data properties which is an area we're going to spend a lot of time in and we're going to go to the normals auto smooth at 36 degrees is my preference you can decide what you like i quite like this how it looks it's a stylized version next thing you want to do is press shift a mesh plane g y lock the y axis to about there then g x bring it out to, to about there so it's it's like halfway basically and then we can press tab to go into edit mode press 2 to choose edge select select this edge press G and press X bring it out like that you can bring it well G X let's bring it out a bit more something like that and now that you've got that we're going to press 3 to be on face select select this top face right click over here subdivide then press 1 to go to vertex select and we're going to turn on x-ray mode now that you've got all your points here we're going to quickly shape a wing that we wish to work with so I'm just going to create whatever comes to mind maybe something like this select these two points here right click subdivide select these two points here press E to extrude and press I don't know and then once I've got this, Control shift b One of my first tutorials I went through is I showed you how to bevel a vertex. And now you can see an example of where it makes sense. It helps you shape, I guess, bug-like wings. <laughs> Select all those verts at the bottom. Press E to extrude. Bring it out like that. And uh, take this middle one. Press G. Take this end one here. Press G. And one thing we need to do if we're going to add a subdivision, we need to control shift B, bevel this just a bit so there's some verts, so that it, it keeps its form as much as it possibly can. Ah, there we go, control shift B. And you can always grab this and move it around if you're not exactly happy with it. And I'm going to select this piece here. And I'm going to select, hold and shift and select this piece here. Right click, subdivide, select the subdivision, press G, bring it out like that now once you've created your weird ass wings for your bug turn off x-ray mode for a second press 3 to be on face select select all these faces press numpad 1 you can zoom in press E to extrude upward choose a thickness that makes sense for you I think that should be good enough and uh, press tab and one thing you want to do which is going to save you a lot of headache is make sure that the body line does not match the wing line. So I'm just going to bring this up a little bit, G, Z, and bring it up to about there. So I know that these lines don't touch. It will make sense just now. And now that I've got my basic wing, which looks completely bonkers, let's go to our 
modifier properties, add modifier, let's add a subdivision modifier. Let's set it to two, or three, four. Yeah, four looks cool. And let's add a mirror modifier. And mirror modifier does that, but we're gonna make it mirror based on the bug body. And there we go, we have perfect wings. We can't apply these settings yet, but it's a start. So the first thing we wanna do is press num uh, go turn X-ray mode on, press tab to go into edit mode, press one to be on vertex select, and we can see that this is the middlemost vertex. Select only that one there, then press shift S and go to cursor to select it. Once you've done that, you can press tab to go into object mode. You can turn X-ray mode off for a second, press numpad one and click over here and change it to 3D cursor. And now you can press R and you can bring it down. Let's choose 50. That's gonna be this low as the wings go, which is great. And now that we've done this, actually I'm gonna try and get it to about there. So it's not touching these, these lines here. It just makes my life easier. Cool, that's fine. So now that we've got that, the next thing we wanna do is apply these settings. Apply, apply. And then we're holding shift, select the body, control J. Now everything is bug body, which is great. But now we want to animate these wings. So we're going to go to the object data property. We're going to press plus plus. Current shape is the default shape, but now we have to key this. And we have to do this one side at a time. So we're going to quickly press tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to select all of this quickly. Uh, you can hold in control and select the vertices that you never meant to select just to make your life a bit easier. Oh, one mistake I did is I forgot to turn X-ray mode on, so let me do this again. So You can select everything like that. Hold in shift and select every single vertex and do your best not to select any vertex that is part of the body. If you only want the wings at this point, one wing at a time, that is perfect. Now that we've got this wing selected and we already set everything up correctly, we can just press R and we can bring it up. I don't care where, how high it goes now because it doesn't really, or if it touches the line, and it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, so I'm gonna actually just take it to about there, which is negative 85. There we go. Cool, now that I know that that is negative 85, I need to do the same with the other side. So I'm going to select everything, hold and shift and select every single bit here. Cool, got everything selected and now I'm going to press R and type in 85. It's just as high. Now when I press tab, go to object mode, and I look at this value here and I move this up with the mouse, we can see it go all the way to the highest point and bring it to zero, which is the lowest point, which is great. So now when it's on zero, this value over here, hover over it with your mouse and press I. And you'll see it goes yellow. And what you did, if you pull up your timeline over here, you created a key, a keyframe, which is great because those are shape keys. Uh, but we don't want to be in our timeline. We want to be in our graph editor, which is quite, quite important. And uh, if we expand this open, we choose modifiers, add modifier, noise modifier, and uh, we can press spacebar to play this. You can see it doesn't look like it's moving much. So one thing we can do off the bat, let's just expand this. Hold on. If you clicked off it like that, just make sure you choose that key frame again. It's in and uh, let me press spacebar because I've got a potato PC over here, so I want to pause that so my PC can actually respond in time. So if you adjust the scale, you're in, in, uh, adjusting the intensity of the flap. So I'm going to make it 0 0.25 to make it flap quite a bit, quite fast. And if you increase the strength, you're increasing the amount of flap. So if we press play now, spacebar now. My PC is struggling, but yeah, it's flapping correctly, and I quite like that. And I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing we need to do 
I'm actually have to leave this open. We've created our first bug, which is great. I press numpad seven. But if we only use one bug, let me show you the, pro the problem you're gonna run into. Let's press shift D to duplicate. I'm just gonna move it around to make it look more natural. Shift D. D. Yeah, my laptop is a potato laptop and it is struggling already, which is a little bit shocking. I think it's all the subdivisions that I created, which is probably a mistake on my end. Cool. So we've created about six of these, but the pro if we press play now, they're all going to flap their wings at the same time and it's not going to look natural. So how do you fix that? So we only need about six for this effect to work. So we're going to select this first one. The first one has an offset of zero, so we leave it as that. We select the next one, and we just move this. So we're going to make the offset here 13. It doesn't really, as long as none of them are the same, negative 30, uh, 59, or whatever it is. And just have fun with this, 60, 90, whatever it is. And... Uh, Now when we press play, they're all flapping at different speeds. And the benefit of that, it creates a level of realism. And to animate wings flapping like this with keyframes would be a complete waste of time. This is the way you probably want to do it. Okay, great. So now that we've done that, the next step, I'm going to just hide everything that is not to do with this bug. I'm going to select all these bugs over here, which is a complete is done so those are those are going to be our bugs that flap so we've created the procedural flap and we're happy with that but now we need to press shift we have to create a new collection select this collection press shift a and we're just going to add a cube and i'm going to press that by your numpad one two or three underneath numpad three there's a delete button there with a dot press that zooms in so it takes you exactly where this dot is we can also, for the time being, change this to timeline. Put this to frame one. And frankly, I don't need to see this right now. And what I'll do here is press numpad one to be in front of orthographic. Press tab. Press three to choose face select. Select this top face. Press G. And press C to lock to the ZZ axis. And do something like that. You don't really have to do this. I'm just doing it. Now that you've got this cube over here next thing you want to do is go to your particle properties and we're going to add a particle property setting we're going to change this number to you can change it to what you like my pc is probably going to struggle on 100 but let's do 100 and just make sure your frame start is the same as your frame end so the animation doesn't generate the bugs throughout the thing they're all there from the very beginning it just will look more natural and we're going to make the lifespan the same as the timeline which is currently set to 250 so it doesn't just randomly disappear when it's when we're looking at it. And now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is to go to our physics properties and we want to change it from gravity to void. We'll come back to physics. We're just going to render quickly, change from halo to collection. And because we only have our bugs in the bug collection, we're going to choose bugs, which is great. Uh, but now we have to go to our physics settings over here. We choose void, which is correct. But there's a few other bits that we want to change. Number one, it, let's open up movement over here. Let's change the mass to make it much lighter, 0 0.025, so it can leave this space. Let's just press play quickly and just see if it works. Yeah, my computer's dying. It's moving each second one frame at a time. So what I'll do is I'll pause it. <laughs> wow and I'm just going to change to frame 14 or 100 well 100 they're already miles gone where did they go let's just go back to frame 38 there they I think that's one of them frame 16 okay there we go so we can see all our moths being generated and flying all around, which will look really realistic once we render it. 
biggest mistake I made was adding all the subdivision surfaces. So you probably want to avoid that step. All right. So the next thing we want to do, like you learn in um, this lazy t t uh, tutorial, is can you teach them how to love? In other, other words, how to follow an object. So let's quickly create a new object. I'm just going to move this in there. And we can make everything visible. And I'm just going to change the light settings quickly just to sun and to 15. And then I'm going to press G, bring it up like that, just so it's out the way. I'm going to delete this camera and I'm going to add a new camera just now, so that's fine. Right, in this new collection of here, we are going to press Shift A. And I'm just going to use a UV sphere. I'm going to press G. And for fun, why not? Let's add a material to it. I'm going to use an emission material. And like a yellow off white color should be fine. If we change to materials, I'm also going to press S to scale this up. Obviously, I want to just change this quickly to individual origin. Press S and just scale it up a little bit. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. The next thing we want to do is click back on this, let's rename this cube, um, cube physics. So we know that our physics settings is set to this cube. So we can go to our physics settings quickly. Yeah, my PC is struggling. But I imagine most of you have better PCs than this, so that's cool. So for this next step, we've got the weight correct, but we need to create a void rule. So let's quickly set that up. We need to go to void brain. And I'm just going to delete everything here in void brain and just add one rule, which is follow the leader. And now that I've added follow the leader, which is pretty dope, if we have to add what is the leader. Well, we're going to rename the sphere to, you can call it lamp, I'm going to call it light source. Because bugs are attracted to light, so we'll go back to our cube physics. Boyd, let's go back to Boyd brain, which is I am scrolling, it's just taking that long with this potato PC. <laughs> right, Boyd Brain, follow the leader, and we select the leader being the light source. Now, theoretically, if we press play, we should see all these guys fly to this light source and yeah I regret adding all those subdivisions to be honest I wish I could take it back but it's too late I applied it destructive modeling my bad sorry guys but uh, I think you get the idea it's all flying there quite fast but to make it fly more naturally let's quickly do that if we watch Ian Uber's tutorial he says these are the best settings well, in his view so let's just use the same settings as he does purely because I have made the mistake of using too many subdivision surfaces. I probably should have stuck to one or two max, if any. So that was my bad. So let's just adjust these settings. I actually have tested these settings out. They work out pretty well. So I'm not planning to tempt with fate here. 0 0.292. And this one, I believe, is 0 0.064. And let's just double check. Yep all these settings match which is perfect uh, last thing I would, you could do you could choose each of these bugs and go to materials and we can add a different material color because why not bug one bug two we can red and yeah you can have fun with this so i'm just going to do this as quickly as i can but uh once again 
don't make that terrible mistake of using too many subdivisions. New and uh, but this will look nice having different colors, so you, it will just uh, improve the animation. So it's worth the uh, worth the hassle to have some fun with this. So it's not like we going to the shade <laughs> editor and really making this look perfect, but it's going to look good from afar, so to speak, or interesting. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that done, um, the next thing we want to do, just to test this out quickly, is I'm going to press spacebar. And if this is working, they're going to follow this light source over here. And to be honest with you, it might be quicker if I just use solid view mode. So I'm just waiting for it to register that I did press solid view mode. Any day now. There we go. And I can also turn off this extra mode. Don't need it. I did click it. Let's see how long it takes to register the click. The good news is this should inspire you if you have a potato PC at home. I mean, if I can do this with absolute garbage, so can you. Oh my goodness. And just to test this out, I'm going to select this cube and I'm going to press G. I click. Now, in theory, if this is working, these bugs are going to now turn around and follow where the ball has went. So if they're turning around now and they go in this direction, we know that follow the leader works. And I'll end this tutorial here, and I'll quickly do a final render, just to, for demonstration purposes. And uh, yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And yes, follow the leader is working. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you complete uh, his tutorial. And uh, have a great day. Cheers, man. I hope you had fun, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.